Hello there, YouTube. We are back with another deck profile for you guys. This one is a little bit of a special video. This is our first members only profile to go live on the channel. Uh, shout out to TJ for getting all this started for you guys. But this is something that we've been meaning to roll out for you all who are supporting us and are members to our channel. Um, essentially, for those of you who are members, you'll be seeing this video a little earlier. Um, a sneak preview, so to speak, uh, prior to this video going public to the rest of the community. So you'll get these videos, um, like I said, a couple days earlier, just as sort of like a perk for supporting the channel. In the future, we're hoping to do more things um, that we've got some ideas for. We just haven't really finalized it. So be on the lookout for more updates regarding that. Uh, we really do appreciate everything that the community has done for us. So we do want to give it back to you guys and give you a little something to show our appreciation. Uh, but today's deck profile is going to be our also first profile that is post ban list. Um, and this is one that I know um, one of our members requested. Uh, shout out to you, Sandor93. This one is for you. Uh, this particular profile is going to be about Ancient Gurumon and in particular the red base version of the deck. It's still going to be very, very strong. We all know that Ukoman and Louie have both been hit. So there are going to be definitely some changes to the build that I had previously been testing out and previous or er, changes to the previous like version that TJ and I had talked about earlier on in the meta. A couple things before we hop into the video itself. You know, if you do like our content, you want to keep supporting the channel, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. And, you know, check out the socials, which are linked down in the video description below, along with instructions on how to become a member of the channel if you want you know, early access to some of these deck lists and the other perks that are on the way. Uh, but without further ado, let's hop right into the video here. Alrighty guys, so to start off with our eggs, we're going to be running four of the BT14 Coromon. Uh, really good egg for this deck. It's very generic, so easily splashable in a lot of your multicolored decks. Inheritable to draw a card every time you remove something from opponent security is really, really good for consistency. In a deck that relies on its pieces, you know, being able to proc this with such an easy uh, condition is, I think, just really, really good, right? Um, and like I said, easily splashable, very generic effect, and I think perfect for the deck. To run on the eggs, we do run a fifth egg just because we do run a lot of low-end rookies that we're swinging a lot with, is the new BT-17 Gigimon. Gigimon has a really cheeky effect. I think now that Uko is limited to one... Maybe a little less viability because Numemon maybe not be as prevalent. But at the same time, BT17 GG when attacking, being able to pay a memory to pop a low cost body can come up big. Um, particularly when paired with the BT17 Ancient Garumon's effect, getting rid of your opponent's low to the ground bodies to help with additional removal via Ancient's effect, I think will be really nice. So BT17 GG, I think it's a pretty good fifth uh egg tech for sure um and then moving on to the rookies we will start with the now limited to one um ukoman promo uko we know what it does i'm not going to talk too much about it but there's a reason this guy got restricted um but because of this restriction we are going to round out the uko package with now four of the bt16 ukoman um just really good for consistency right um evo for one but allows you to search Find your pieces and hatch an egg to promote another rookie next turn is just huge gas and there's really no reason not to run it out of four of now that your promo Uko is restricted. Um, speaking about draw power consistency, we add to that with a, our promo Gilmon, very similar to the Muchomon here from BT15, which we run a four of. Both of these cards, when attacking, allow you to draw one. The only difference is that Mucho has to have you swing at player. So if you're swinging on top of like a low end body or something, you do lose that ability to draw. Um, Gilmon is a more generic when attacking draw one, but both of these cards paired with your Cormon egg can just help you find your pieces and do a lot of digging in your deck. So I think really, really adds to consistent consistency, which is well needed in most decks, right? And then we round out the rookies with two of BT14 Gotsuman. Gotsu, I think, has a lot of value now, particularly post ban list, because Imperial is one of the top decks of the format, if not the top deck of the format now, with both Yellow Vaccine and Numemon being hit. Um, not being able to play by effects is huge. 
mainly because if you do get rid of their stack, whether it's a Dragon Mode, whether it's a Pyildramon, and it has that Partition Inherit, Gotumon just stops Partition, right? And obviously for decks like Numei, it doesn't allow them to play out the effect either. And don't forget about Dex Daruga as well, who also has a tendency to play cards out via effect. So, Gotsu low-key is an underrated card in this meta, I believe, particularly if you're running um, red base Ancient Guru. There's definitely a case to maybe bump him up to a 3 of now, particularly, like I said, with Imperial floating around a lot more. So, definitely a very, very strong card there. Next, moving on to the hybrid package. To start off with our older hybrids, we're going to run one of the BT4 Lobomon and one of the BT7 Kendo. I don't have a whole lot to say about these cards, just outside of that, you know, that they're an additional hybrid target for you. I know that some folks are very content with just four of the new Lobo and four of the new Kendo. I think that's very reasonable. For me, there's definitely been instances where, like, I just can't find them or my hybrids are in trash and I'm really struggling to find that last piece. Sometimes these two have come in clutch. They don't have an inheritable and they're on Evo for this guy is sort of like, it's okay. Like it's not great. Um, so I really just use it mainly for an additional cross piece for Ancient Guru. But at the same time, you know, I think having additional hybrid targets, is never a bad idea for you. Now we move on to our new hybrid package. As I said before, BT17 Kendo, really, really strong card, um, allows you to draw one regardless when attacking, which is huge because it will always proc your Koji effect when an effect, which is a, when an effect adds cards to hand, you gain a memory. So this helps you, makes your plays a lot more efficient by essentially being a one cost Evo when you swing. Um, and then interestingly enough too, it has a second one attacking effect, which is you may digivolve into a Digimon card with the hybrid in traits with the reduced cost of one, which pairs very, very nicely with this guy over here, which is BT17 Lobomon. So essentially one of the sort of goaded combos that you can do is you go into the Kendo, you go ahead and swing, right? You draw a card, gain a memory, then you proc the one attacking effect to go into Lobo here. Lobo has the one digivolving effect that if you have a Kendo Garumon in stack, you can go ahead and digivolve into an ancient Garumon regardless of its play or evo cost and evo conditions for a cost of three. So you then go into ancient for a cost of three, proc its effect with the caveat that it does get deleted. But honestly, you almost want your ancients to die because that's where a lot of your recursion and efficiency comes into play. So a really devastating just combo right there, right? And it's really fueled by these two cards. Ancient, the BT-17 Ancient, which we'll get to in a little bit, is also a cross card. So you can go ahead and just hard play it and digicross. And Kendo and Lobo are your two digicross requirements. So definitely, if you can run more of them, you do. That's why I'm running those two, like the BT-4 Lobo and the BT-7 Kendo, uh, for a total of 10 hybrid targets. And I mean, hybrid for game is still a strat, right? I mean, you're running a hybrid deck. You might as well run the hybrids. Then moving on to the level fives, we've got two of BT7 uh, Lobomon here, or Beowulf Mon, sorry. I like BT7 Beowulf over the new BT17 Beo. You probably seen in some of our commentary videos that um, I had utilized the BT17 Beo in some builds. I still think it's a pretty good card, don't get me wrong. Being able to Evo for a cost of three by tucking a Kendo and Lobo from trash is really efficient and really good and the effect essentially to stun a card is also really, really nice. But that being said, you need your hybrids in trash, which sometimes if they're just not there, it makes the card a little bit of a dead card in hand because it is a four cost Evo, which in a meta that is very fast and very punishing for memory inefficient plays can really hurt you for very little benefit. So that's why I'm opting for BT7 Beowulfmon. It evos for a cost of one on top of a hybrid with Tamer in, uh, the Inherits. And then when swinging, you can go ahead and bounce one of your level four hybrids here. For example, this Kendo, bounce it back to hand, bounce your opponent's level four lower cards back to their hand, proccing, you know, Koji's effect on your end and also getting rid of smaller bodies, which pairs again very, very well with your Ancient Garumon plays. So. That's why I'm opting for BT7 Beowulf as opposed to the new one. It's more efficient and you can get rid of smaller bodies, which 
ultimately will help your ancient guru mon plays. The last level 5 we do run, shout out to Mike for convincing me here, is the BT7 Jet Sylphie. Um, similar to what Bayo is all about, right? Being a cheap one cost Evo is pretty darn good value. Um, and also being able to recover one can come up, you know. A lot of decks now, particularly in BT17, if you're going in the mirror, you're going against, you know, um, other ancient decks, Gabu Rush decks, they're going to be chipping away at security and sometimes you really need that recovery. Um, and also just a cheap level 5 to go into to then, to then Evo into Ancient is also not a bad play. So one of Jet Selfie I don't think is a bad idea um, and definitely warranted in this build. And on to the boss monster himself. BT17 Ancient Gurumon. Um, this card is so so good. Um, it is finally the like updated Ancient Guru version that like I've been waiting for since BT4. Um, really, really cracked card. Does a lot of things in terms of removal um, and also getting rid of security. So for those of you who don't know, on play when Evo, you return one of your your opponent's Digimon with the lowest um, level to the hand. So whether you Evo into it, whether you Digicross with it, you just bounce something back to hand, which is always really good. And then your turn, once per turn, when an effect adds cards to you or your opponent's hand, you can bounce the top card of security to your opponent's hand. So that part, I think, is what makes it really, really busted. If it were like one or the other, right? Whether it's when an effect adds cards to your hand or when an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, that I think makes it a little bit more calm. I think this being the fact that whenever a card is added to any player's hand, whether it's yours or your opponent's, is really, really good, you know? Um, so I think that this card, just being able to say goodbye to security, not proc any effects, and then if you do that combo with Kendo and Lobo, you go ahead, you know, you do the kind of ladder swing Evo and then Evo into Ancient. Not only are you drawing a card, which procs its effect, you can also get rid of something um, and then do a check, right? So essentially you're doing two checks with this Ancient Gurumon, one check and one bounce for a total of two security removed. And then on deletion, you can go ahead and return one tamer card and one hybrid from your trash back to your hand. And then you can play out a tamer card with an inheritable or just any tamer card from your hand without paying the play cost. So again, I prefer to do the Evo into it via the Kendo and Lobo, which is number one, why I'm running very few level fives. And number two, um, I just think it's much better to Evo into it. You get so much more value out of it. Digicrossing it is still really good removal because if you start at three, you just send your opponent to three, get rid of a body. But being able to Evo into Ancient, potentially do, you know, burn two security, one via, again, bounce and one via burn, or one via an actual check, delete it, pick up a piece, play out a tamer so that you're ready to go next turn is just immense value. Um, and I honestly prefer to go up into it, have it die after its Evo effect, and then play out more Tamers and do it all over again. So I think this card is really, really good. Um, and like I said, I, I will usually Evo into it as opposed to Digicross. But there are some instances where Digicross can most definitely come into play. Um, and that'll do it for our Digimon, actually. So then we'll now move on to our Tamers. We're going to run one of the now restricted promo Louie. You know, once again, your red-based rookies are really your gas to this deck, um, at least in the early game. So having Louie just to promote and go for early aggression is never really a bad call. I was running it at a 3 of prior to the restriction list coming out, and now I think a 1 of is more than sufficient uh, for what you want to do. Follow that up with uh, 2 BT8 Digimon Emperor. I still think Emperor has a... Um, role to play in today's meta, right? Um, yes, Ukumon is limited. Yes, Numemon is probably going to be less prevalent in, you know, in competitions and big scale tournaments and whatnot. But that being said, I think Emperor still can do a whole lot of damage to a lot of things, right? You know, you stifle Red Base Ancient in the mirror match. This card is annoying as heck, right? Being able to just stifle your opponent to memory every time they promote one of their rookies is huge. Um, Dexter Ruga, if they, if they are playing purple base, you punish them for pushing out a Lugamon. 
Um, Pulse Mon, you punish them for pushing out rookies. The more SR rookies that we have, the more value this card has as well. So I think you really still run Emperor as best you can in most decks in today's meta. I definitely think you can find room to fit at least two of these guys in there and just be super, super annoying to your opponent. Because Louie got hit, they have now become Zoe's in my build. I think Zoe is just an additional consistency piece. I flirted with the idea of Gravity Crush uh, just to give myself more memory and be able to maybe extend my plays a little bit more and get more damage, similar to what Red Hybrid does, right? Where how many times have we seen a Red Hybrid player use Grav Crush to just gain two memory, go into another hybrid, and do a crazy play to go for game, right? So I did flirt with Grav Crush, but again, for consistency's sake, I felt like Zoe was just a little bit better being a three-drop tamer, pick something out of security, and also be an additional tamer target where if I need to just hybrid for game, I can still do that as well off of Zoe too. You know, the Kendos and Lobos aren't restricted to uh, Koji by any means. And there have definitely been times where I felt like having only eight blue tamers to hybrid off of hurt me because if I weren't seeing those tamers, I definitely was in a sticky spot. So that's why I gave myself two additional targets to Evo onto. So I have a total of... 10 hybrid tamers to potentially evo off of and speaking of hybrid tamers um pretty self-explanatory here four of the bt7 koji and four of the new bt17 koji bt7 koji i think is really really good particularly now in a meta once again where we are going to be seeing dex dorugora become more prevalent i think having yourself be undirect unredirectable is super clutch uh, we've seen Mirage um, take full advantage of that with its Makao, and I think Koji just enables that for Ancient. Being able to ensure that your swings go through, particularly with Ancient, is immense. Um, the effect to tuck cards underneath and treat it as a level 5, I haven't really had that come up for me. Um, granted, I'm also just not used to doing that, so maybe it's just something that's not in my DNA. Um, but I really don't see the benefit because you typically want to have them all in hand to be able to do this play. And there have definitely been times where my hand size is very, very small with this deck. So I feel like you use this really more so just for its tamer support and being able to give yourself an unredirectable swing. And then here, the BT17 Koji is a memory setter, which is always huge for hybrid decks. Um, and then being able to give your stack jamming if a card was returned to your hand an effect is also huge um also just gains a memory similar to bt7 koji so both i think are just really good tamer cards great for this archetype and i don't really have much else to say about them and lastly moving into the options we do run one evolution ancient from bt7 um as a refresher for those of you who aren't as familiar with this card if you have a digimon with hybrid in its traits in play you may use this option card uh, without meeting its color requirements, so it doesn't necessarily need like a color as long as you have um, a hybrid in play, which if you're running this deck, you most definitely will. Um, and your level 4 Digimon can Digivolve into one Digimon in your hand with matching colors and 10 warriors in its traits for its Digivolution cost, ignoring its level. So really, really good for if you're stuck and you're missing, say, the second part to the Kendo Lobo combo where you're either just with a Lobo or just with a Kendo, um, and you're sort of in a spot where you want your Ancient to stay on board, you can go ahead and just Evo into that hybrid, play out Evolution Ancient, then go into Ancient Guru for four. And you can just straight Evo on top of that hybrid without needing to do that combo play, which this acts as almost like a pseudo level five in that sense, which I think is really, really nice value um just again if you're in a pinch and you need to get into ancient to either bounce something or potentially even just go for a check right this can be a really really good card so um i think well worth one of as a tech choice other people are running maybe an extra deity or you know an extra you know other tech choice whether it be another tamer um another consistency piece whatnot but i felt like this has come up a few times in locals and in testing so i think it's it's earned its spot in my deck at least speaking of ancient garden deity we do run this option as a two of new card in bt17 um really 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 good 
essentially reads when you have a tamer or digimon in play uh with hybrid so most of the times again with this deck you meet that condition you may ignore this card's color requirements so you don't need a blue and red source you can just go ahead and play it um you may return one card with hybrid or 10 warriors so great for recurring and picking back up your ancients or a hybrid that you're missing uh from your trash to the hand then you may play one digimon card with a 10 warriors trait or one tamer card which is also key with inherited effects from your hand with the play cost reduced by four so essentially what you can do with this card right is play it out for two if your ancient is in trash you can go ahead and pick it up if you're missing a hybrid piece you can go ahead and pick it up you more often than not will go ahead and play out your ancient for reduced cost of four so think about it if you are digi crossing with the full combo ancient guru is already a six play cost after you digi cross now you make ancient a two cost so by playing this option you can get a four cost ancient guru Rumon on the board ready to go for next turn you know the downside is that you don't get rush but at the you know you still get the removal you still get to bounce security potentially off of the ancient play so i still think it's a really really good option again i could easily see this becoming a third ancient guardian uh just to give myself that recursion and potential play value but i've been happy at a two of it's come up when i needed it it hasn't felt bricky in hand if i felt like three or four is too much um i felt i feel like two is just the perfect number for it the security effect is also really good being able to play a tamer from your hand or trash without paying the cost is again crazy value um and then you get to just add it to hand which is even just busted right because you get to play out your tamer add it to hand next turn potentially play it out for two and do more shenanigans so really really good card um and definitely key to both the ancient guru line as well as the ancient gray line since we are running red based obviously you want some form of removal um again crimson goes hard in pretty much most recent formats nowadays being able to hard stop decks like numemon in the past but also hard stop partition is really really good i've noticed that blue based at least when i was testing it did struggle against wide boards so having a card that can deal with that threat and just take that away i think is really really nice um and potentially if you're going against a wide board red you can again have it be a really cheap option to play out and still keep turn and you know as i alluded to before with gotsuman there are a lot of decks now that play out via effect so sometimes a, just a anticipated crimson is enough to give you another turn to potentially go for games so i think crimson is a definite must in this deck and then last option we're gonna run our last two actually are sort of our two limited blue options right ice wall hammer spark there's not a whole lot to say about it besides they're just really busted cards there's a reason they're restricted they're you know they're very generic good blue cards to use for multiple ways whether it's aggression whether it's defense you know there's just not a whole lot else to say about these two cards and that'll really do it for the deck you know Alrighty guys here, so I did want to just kind of highlight the Lobomon Kendo combo that I had talked about a lot um, earlier on in the video when I was talking about the cards, but essentially, you know, say you have this theoretical setup here, right, with the Muchamon in back and Koromon, you start your main phase and you promote, right? So usually what I'll do is, you know, Koji sets me to three, which is the perfect case scenario, um, and then what you can do here is you can do a couple of things. You can just choose to go ahead and swing with Mucho here and then, which I think is totally fair. Um, some folks will keep it on board and then go into a Kendo here. And then what you can do is now go ahead, swing with Mucho. You draw a card, which added cards to your hand via effect um, twice, which will proc Koji's effect, which essentially puts you back to three. But like I said, you can choose to sequence this starting play however you want. Some may argue it's safer to stay in the back, swing with Mucho, and then go ahead, then go with the Koji. Again, either or, I think the idea is still the same, where you go into Kendo, you declare a swing. Kendo, when attacking, you draw one, gaining the memory potentially off of Koji, which then allows you, when attacking off of Kendo, to go into Lobo for free. Lobo for free on evo then allows you to go into ancient gar for free now when you go ahead and do this you bounce something back to hand from your opponent's side of the field they 
add top cutter security to the hand and then you can do your check right there and then right so at the end of turn you can go ahead and pass turn however way you wish ancient goes ahead and dies you can pick up the hybrid again and then pick up the tamer place that tamer so you can imagine the loop that you can start to do with these cards right where you go into your ancient you do their big unga boonga play curl your pieces play out your tamers again set them up for next turn and just do it all over again right and that's what makes this deck really really scary and really really fast um and i have been having a lot of fun playing hybrids again i know a lot of folks don't have very fond memories of hybrid meta but i do think that this um ancient guru package plays a little bit differently from your classic bt7 blue hybrid right bt7 blue hybrid was very much a stun deck whereas this is a little bit more of your traditional like low to the ground aggression um, hybrid evo into tamers to proc different effects sort of thing so i've been having a lot of fun with it um again this is the red base there is a blue base that is floating out there um that i am going to keep testing now that we have the uko restriction and decks are a little bit slower i am curious to see if blue base becomes a little bit more viable and i'm very interested to see what our overall meta is going to be like here in north america and in europe about how as well as Latin America, Oceania, where now that we have these restrictions, how is the meta going to shape out? You know, we have our first wave of regionals coming up. I believe one will be at the end of September and then the first week of October. So we've got some time to test. Let me know what you guys think of this build below. Let me know if you would make any changes to this particular um, setup here. And let me know what you think about red base versus blue base now. Now that we have the restriction list in place and now that we have the Ukumans gone and the meta a little bit slower, do you guys think that blue base becomes a little bit more viable compared to red? Um, but yeah, enough said. So thank you all for tuning in. We always appreciate the support. We can't thank you guys enough. Um, if you haven't become a member yet and this has convinced you to do so, check out the video description below. It'll have instructions on how to become a member to our channel where you get early access to deck profiles like this and other perks that are coming along the way. Uh, shout out to the members who are already part of that perk we appreciate every one of you and we can't wait to see you on that next video bye bye